Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, if you go back through boxing history, you're going to find that injuries happen. Some of the worst injuries in boxing history happen when a fighter has to lose a lot of weight to make weight. Right? That's when you get instances like the Gerald McClellan tragedy. Right? Understand that losing weight can also hurt your punch resistance. Right? It's been shown that if you're artificially dehydrated in a fight, punches that you'd normally be able to just shrug off actually hurt you. Understand, too, we've seen situations where fighters leave the scale at a weigh-in and immediately grab a bottle of water. Right? But understand the damage has been done already to the body. Right? There are even suggestions that when you're dehydrated before a fight, then you rapidly rehydrate right before the fight. Your skin is more prone to getting cut. Right? So it's very important, in my opinion, that we create a rule structure that doesn't force fighters to hopelessly drain themselves and endanger themselves before fights. Now you have a 25 pound gap. It's outrageous. Right? A 25 pound gap between light heavyweight, 175, right? Think Jean Pascal, think Adonis Stevenson, think Sergei Kovalev, right? And cruiserweight, 200 pounds, right? That's a 25 pound gap. Now understand, it used to be worse than that. Uh, historically, you didn't have a cruiserweight division back in the day. You only had divisions up to light heavyweight, and then you had some nebulous concept called the heavyweight division. Right? So if you were above 175, you were fighting with the big boys. Now, some smaller guys were able to survive. Rocky Marciano, right, weighed less than 200 pounds for most of his fights. Right, but you could imagine there's a different group out there before the cruiserweight division who were great fighters, perhaps pound for pound type fighters, who were too small to deal with the Joe Lewis's of the world and the Primo Carneras of the world. Right, the big George Foreman's of the world. So you get the cruiserweight division at 200 pounds. Suddenly, those fighters can compete. Think about the great cruiserweight champions in history, right? Understand the creation of the cruiserweight division gave them an opportunity, right? Take even the cruiserweights who survived and went on to big things in the heavyweight division, right? A guy like David Hay, Right? Wouldn't have had the success early in his career without that cruiserweight division, even if he were winning. In other words, he would have been winning, but he wouldn't have had a title. He wouldn't have been able to market himself the way he did. You would have heard, hey, David, hey, up and comer. Right? That's not quite the same as saying, David, hey, cruiserweight champion. Right? You understand the accomplishment, the level of skill of the fighter when the word champion is added to the equation. Well, now you have a situation that I believe is simply untenable. Understand, at lighter weights, if I'm 140, I'm a junior welter. If I gain 7 pounds, I'm a welter. 
right? If I gain seven more pounds, I'm junior middle. If I gain six pounds, I'm a middleweight. That's the gradation down there. Why is it that the minute I'm a pound over 175 pounds, right, the next step up is 20 odd pounds away? Shouldn't be that way. Guys who could be king if boxing recognized their size, created a weight class that fit them. The guys between, let's say, 175, the limit for light heavy, and let's say 185, right? Guys that size need their own division. So I was reading this morning that Nathan Cleverly, <coughs> who is too big at six one and a half for 175 and let me point out the obvious you know he's too big for 175 just by looking at his reduced punch resistance right just by hearing the stories about how he had to drain himself to make 175 right just by looking at how he had to pace himself in fights Right, Nathan Cleverly went up to cruiserweight for a reason. Then he found out he didn't have the punch to be a cruiserweight. Other men at cruiserweight, Tony Bellew comes to mind, were just physically bigger than him at cruiserweight. Right, physically bigger than him. So, of course, now Cleverly, mid-career, late 20s, I believe he's something like 27 years old, is dropping back down to 175. I think that's dangerous. I think that's dangerous. I don't think that turns out well. Look at the guys at 175. Look at the punchers at 175. Kovalev. Stevenson. Pascal. You're going to have a guy below his normal weight, right, placing him at risk in the ring with a machine like the Crusher, Ser Sergei Kovalev. Then you have guys like Arthur Beterbiev. It's clear he's struggling to make weight at 175. That's clear. But it's also clear to me that that front foot heavy power puncher type style might not work at 200, right? Because 200 is 25 pounds away. Wouldn't he benefit from a weight class between light heavy and cruiser? Now, we the fans have to save boxing. This sport is so poorly run that you have situations in televised world-class fights, the Gennady Golovkin, Daniel Gill fight, for example, where two timekeepers somehow couldn't even figure out how to limit the first round to three minutes. Think about it. The very first round of the fight went four minutes. Right? The powers that be simply aren't doing the job. You hear about some of the scoring from some of these judges in these fights and you're just left scratching your head right you know how could any judge look at the Floyd Mayweather Canelo fight the fight that some outlets had as a shutout for Floyd Mayweather right Floyd really should have been charging Canelo tuition right the only mystery for me with that fight is um how Floyd was able to hold the chalk as he wrote on the blackboard in teaching Canelo a conclusive lesson, right? But yet one judge actually had that fight a draw, right? So this sport is simply ridiculous. I believe more than any other sport, fans who love the sport need to step forward and say, hey, hey, how about this proposal? Why don't we add this to the sport to make it better. 
right? Let's try to start a conversation here. I believe the sport would be better off with a light cruiserweight division. Understand, cruiser, the limit used to be 190. Now it's up to 200. <clears throat> you have a lot of great fighters, Danny Green, a bunch of other guys who really are more comfortable in the mid-180s. How could you not have a division between 175 and 185? Right? Aren't there fans who want to see Nathan Cleverly fight in his natural division? You don't want to see Nathan Cleverly dehydrated, reaching for water at a weigh-in, trying to make 175. Don't you, in fact, want to see him at 185? Even 190. Understand, you have some guys right now some of the elites at 175. Jean Pascal comes to mind. Look at Pascal's fight history. You're going to notice some fights Pascal had above 175 pounds. Right? That's a tip-off that the 175 is difficult for him. The problem is he can't say, okay, I'm going to leave 175. Then I'm going to fight for the title at 185. No, because there is no 185. Right? He would have to leave 175 and then compete at 200 pounds. Right? And so we need a division that's somewhere between Sergei Kovalev at 175 and Johan Hernandez at 200. Right? The world has changed. There was a time when Lennox Lewis was viewed as a big heavyweight. Now, size-wise, you have several guys. Think Tyson Fury. Think both Klitschko brothers. Right? You have several guys. Marius Walk, who are at least Lennox Lewis size. Right? Today, Big George Foreman, you have to ask yourself why the word Big's attached to his name. Right? Because everybody's walking around at that size. Right? David Hay is viewed as a small heavyweight, but yet David Hay is much bigger and much heavier than former heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano. Right? So, I hope boxing considers the money to be made. This is how poorly run the sport is, folks. You have to convince the sport to take advantage of obvious money-making opportunities, right? I hope boxing understands there's a lot of money to be made from a light cruiserweight division, right? Maybe a Danny Green who didn't want to be fighting at 200. Just look at the weight restrictions he put in some of his fights. Maybe a Danny Green comes back if you make a weight class that fits his weight class. Maybe a Nathan Cleverly is able to eat some extra food before a fight so he doesn't have to stay on the ropes for periods of time in fights. Right? Maybe a Jean Pascal says, hey, this is great. I can have that extra steak. I can have the potatoes with the steak. Why do I need to be fighting at 175? Let me come in at 185, make the weight more comfortably, and bring excitement to a new division. Right? So let's figure out the weight classes here. Arthur Perturbioff, I got to tell you, I don't think he has a bright future at 175. He looks too big to me for the division. And that boomerangs on you. The problem, though, and by the way, wasn't he down in his last fight? The problem, though, is I don't think he shakes up Marco Huck or Johan Hernandez at 200 pounds. I don't. They're going to see some smaller guy on his front foot. They're going to say, okay, well, you know, I've been in against bigger hitters. But at 185, Paterbioff's a beast. At 185, isn't that just about right? And who could argue because it's 10 pounds more than light heavyweight? Keep in mind, 
The weight class right below light heavy is super middle at 168. How come super middle is within 7 pounds of light heavy? But yet we don't have another weight class within 15 pounds of light heavy on the top side. We need that weight class. Understand too, even cruiser weight has curiously lifted the limit. Right? It used to be down around 190. Now it's up at 200 pounds. We need to get a weight class. One, if not two, weight classes to bridge that 25 pound abyss between light heavy and cruiser. Until that time comes, in my opinion, Nathan Cleverly and Arthur Perturbioff are going to be men without weight classes. Understand too, let's say Jean Pascal beats Sergei Kovalev, right? Fans are going to want to see more Pascal fights. But understand, they would be seeing a diminished Pascal. Right? Because they would be seeing a Pascal whose weight drained to make 175. Right? If boxing opens it up, it actually creates another belt that the Jean Pascals of the world can strive for. That could change things. Let me close in saying Tomas Ademek, great fighter. He was the light heavyweight champion. Understand, he then was credible fighting at heavyweight. Didn't we shortchange his career by not giving him more weight classes to fight for between light heavy and cruiser and heavy? Right? Because understand, if you're Tomas Ademic and you can no longer make 175, then the next step up's cruiserweight. Right? He didn't have the opportunity to collect all the belts, let's say someone like a Floyd or a Manny collected. Right? You hear about those guys having more than a handful of, you know, weight class belts. And then you realize, hey, if you turn left or right, if you gain a few pounds at the lower weights, you're in a new weight class, right? Lightweight's 135. Think about it, right? Junior welter, one step up. It's just five pounds more. Compare and contrast that with the higher weight classes where cruiser weight is 25 pounds above light heavy, right? It makes these claims about belts in six or seven weight classes look ridiculous, doesn't it? Right? Because then you look and you say, okay, well, what's the pound swing between all the weight classes that let's say a Floyd or a Manny picked up titles in? And then you're saying, wow, you know, at the higher weights, what is that, one weight class swing? 175 to 200? Right? So boxing needs to get its act together. Light cruiserweight division. In fact, maybe we want to fool around and change the names of some of these divisions, right? We have super middleweight and stuff like that. It's a bit odd to have light heavyweight, then cruiserweight, then heavyweight, right? Maybe we want to come up with some new names and stuff like that. The point, though, is we need a weight class that'll allow guys in that 185 to 190 class to actually compete for titles, right? Don't force those guys to foolishly lose a lot of weight to try to fit themselves into 175 for a weigh-in. That's a recipe for disaster. That's when fighters hurt themselves. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.